Hey, what's up, everyone? I hope you're having a good day. Um, Morton County Sheriff's Office, um, Officer Paul D. Laney out of Fargo, I believe. And a lot of local media companies owned by Fox News are saying that the camp is violent and that Monday's action was more like a riot. And uh, so we have first-hand accounts. I've been at camp. Nothing like that is going on. Um, trust me, if, if something was like that, I would leave because I'm not about that. And neither is anyone at the camp. In North Dakota, yesterday's protest at a Dakota Action Pipeline construction site south of St. Anthony were described by law enforcement as a riot. It appears at this time to be a pretty uh, volatile situation. Some would like to say they, that this was a protest, this was not a protest, this was a riot. On Monday, um, real early in the morning, everyone got up, uh, caravaned out to the front lines where the pipeline actually is um, where they have they have like the, the ditches dug and everything um, and uh, they had a TP set up and they performed another ceremony there um, and then there were some folks tied down to the machines a few miles up but we couldn't get close to them um, so we did the best we could uh, was it blocked off or how come yeah they had it blocked off um, after the ceremony we we got a, a word that uh, the police were coming in and they kind of had us cut off uh, from the road um, so they come down and we're all we're all getting out of there uh, except for some of the folks who were gonna stay in the TP um, knowing they would get arrested uh, to stand in solidarity with the folks chained down um, and those of us that didn't we were going up and they, they cut through the uh, group right away you know they had uh, batons and, and um, the sh you know body armor and everything uh, cut right through us and got to the the guy who was sort of leading the action. Um, I guess they because they had you know they had uh, helicopters and uh, even a plane was out there. Um, a lot a lot of folks sort of dispersed at that point. Some of us held a line. My friend's got a bad knee actually, and they they pushed her right over. Uh, at that point, a young woman from a native youth group took the, the megaphone and started leading the uh, the action. Um, so as they got rid of the guy who was leading it, arrested him, then she stepped up and yeah. took the. And it, it was it was absolutely inspiring. Like by she was uh, calling out uh, all the all the chants and everything, um, and I. <laughs> I've got kind of a big voice, so I was I was shouting as loud as I could because I really wanted to support her and everything because she was working so hard. Um, and some folks were like really really angry, um, understandably, and you know some some insults got thrown back uh, at the police, but she she kept all that in check. Uh, like as soon as that started to bubble up, she was like, "Guys, we're here peacefully. We're here in prayer. Um, we're we're not the enemies of the police," you know. Uh, and everyone, everyone calmed down, um, and it was, uh, it was really, like, touching, like, some of the youth group, uh, tried to go and shake hands with some of the officers, uh, and, of course, they didn't, um, who didn't? The police didn't shake hands with them. Uh, it looked like, looked like we were getting through to some of them. No, uh, nobody broke the line or anything because I, th I think if one officer would have broken the line then they all would have broken because I think a lot of them didn't want to be there you know uh, a lot of them really looked like they were stuck like they were stuck doing that job and they they didn't know how to get out of it occasionally they started dragging um, some of the protectors out uh, the water protectors and at that point we would have to be like hey we got cameras you know we got cameras um, and then uh, things sort of died down. They had they had like big armored cars and everything. They had uh, one of the one of the officers had a, like a shotgun, um, and they had guys with guns up on the hills. Um, just the fact that they were up there kind of made you uncomfortable. Or? Oh yeah, it's because they weren't they weren't up there from the start. They like they show they came up there um, while the, there was the police line, and then some more came up with guns on the hill, and it was. Uh, that was probably the scariest moment, because um, I didn't know if they were if they were about to escalate things or not, you know. Yeah. Um, 
they were the cops were out on the road and they had they had all their like like I said armored cars and like a big bus to to take arrestees out and um, a bunch of squad cars from all over the country um, I guess they're uh, I heard they were hiring people out like with experience in riot training which doesn't make sense to me because <laughs> that was the farthest thing from a riot I've ever seen it, it wasn't just peaceful it was like we were actively reaching out to the officers and, and trying to communicate with them as human beings. Um, like, uh, some of the native folks uh, went down and like blessed them. Uh, and we were trying to open up a dialogue, you know? Um, and I, it's not their fault that they have to stay behind those those visors and everything that they all have to, you know, stay in uniform and, and look like faceless and, and, and all that. Um, it, it's the people who are making them go out there's fault. And like I said, I don't think I don't think a lot of them want to be out there. I think that they're doing their job and they don't know how to get out. Um, but. To call to call it a riot, to call it violent in any way, uh, the close like I said, the closest it came to violence was when they were pushing us back, um, and you know we didn't we didn't try to try to push them or anything. We we backed right up because like we were all unarmed, you know, and they had uh, batons. Like I said, when a guy had a gun, uh, none of us were trying to get hurt. None of us were trying to get anyone else hurt, and. Um, Like, if, if it was a riot, if there was any real violence um, that was happening, uh, that these people in this camp have been committing, um, then that would be all the reason that the police needed to just come into this camp right now. But they haven't, because there isn't, there isn't real violence being committed by these people. Um, and the police know that, and they know they don't have an excuse to come in here. Um, and all these people are working so hard to make sure that they don't get a reason because uh, these people are here in peace, they're here in prayer, um, they're here to protect, you know, um, and they're protecting people, they're protecting men, women, and children, and everyone in this area, uh, and the police through no, through no fault of their own, you know, they're being forced to protect a company and money and a bunch of stuff that won't matter in the end, but all, all the lives of these people here, that matters, you know? All right, well, thanks for sharing your perspective and your story and your experience. Yeah. Uh, there's a question I ask everyone that I'm filming and it's just getting people's perspective. If it was up to you and how you would want the world and the future to go, humanity to go, things to go, if it was up to you, what would you like to see happen? Man, that's a big question. Um, you know, honestly, it, if it was a little bit like this place, it, I think the world would be pretty okay, you know? Um, if everyone could just be peaceful and, and love and support each other and share with each other the way um, people here share both both you know their their resources um food water shelter and uh, their stories you know their lives um i've learned so much about so many different people um in just the short time i've been here uh a lot of us uh in in my group are talking about coming back um around thanksgiving and then again for our winter break uh, and honestly, like, there's some people here that I'm going to be praying for, uh, because the winter's going to get tough and things here are only going to get tougher. Uh, police keep cracking down harder and harder and they're looking for any excuse, you know, to come in here and I worry about some of the folks here just because, you know, if, if things escalate, um, if the police want to escalate things, 
you know, I, I know people here and I've, I've come to care about people here that <clears throat> it really like it tears me up, you know, to think that something might happen here because this place is so beautiful and um, yeah, if the world could be more like Standing Rock, eh? I think that would be a future that I'd be pretty okay with.